Hello and welcome to DS220, Data Modeling with Apache Cassandra, brought to you by DataStax. If this was a live course, we'd have everybody introduce themselves, but this is a one-way video, and so the only person that can really introduce themselves is myself. My name is Jamie King, and I am based in Salt Lake City, Utah. I obviously work for DataStax, but my goals for using Cassandra are to help you become awesome. Chances are you've come to Cassandra because you have a need. You've heard about this big data thing, and you need to handle a lot of data coming in and out, some reliability. Something is not working with your current solution, and so you want to explore and learn more about Apache Cassandra. And that's my job. We're going to go through this course and learn some awesome stuff. My prior experience is that I've built several websites using relational databases. Personal trivia, we generally do two truths and a lie, but uh, I think here, let me just tell you something about myself. I love software development, computer science, anything related to that. I am thoroughly addicted. I've been going to the support groups to try to overcome that, but it really hasn't done me any good. So we have some sweet learning objectives for this course. We've essentially brought you on to Killer Video, which is a video sharing website. You're hired as our database administrator. If you go to the website killervideo.com, you'll see that we've built an entire application on top of Apache Cassandra. Anyway, you've been hired on as a Killer Video database administrator. We're giving you some hands-on experience in this course. We have some wonderful exercises coming up. We've all done it. We're tasked to build an application. We do a little research, a few questions. But then, hey, you know what? Programming is actually typing on a computer. So let's sit down and just start building without much forethought. And eventually that application will turn into some chicken wire and duct tape and this unmaintainable mess, a pile of Jenga sticks where if you change one thing and then it breaks something somewhere else. We've all been through that. Not ideal. However, learning a new platform or spiking, as we call it in the agile world, it's nice to get our hands dirty with the technology. And that's essentially what we're going to do here is build our application using some quick design techniques just to get you familiar with Apache Cassandra. After we've done that, we need to improve our model using these three steps that I want you to tattoo on your forehead. Actually, you can just tattoo them into the neurons in your brain, but we're going to step through this several times. These three steps should become second nature to you. Conceptual, logical, physical. Just a little highlight of what's to come here. Once we've built our model, we need to step back and say, okay, well, where are the places we can improve? Most likely one of the big reasons you're coming to Apache Cassandra is to avoid some latency. If somebody makes a query on the database, we want the database to return that result set extremely fast. And so we can help the database along, just like any application development, by stepping back and saying, okay, well, what can we tune? What can we improve? Where can we optimize? One of my teammates stepped back and snapped this photo of me and my coworkers as we were working on the killervideo.com website. The general algorithm for building any application is to analyze requirements. What problem do we need to solve? Hopefully we're not in left field working on something that's not core to what we're trying to actually accomplish. So it's important to analyze the requirements. We also need to identify the entities and relationships. Those are conceptual modeling terms. Remember, conceptual is one of the words I asked you to tattoo into the neurons in your brain. An entity are objects in our system. For example, in Killer Video, we have videos. We have users. We have comments. We have several things like that. Those are entities. And then we have relationships between those entities, such as a user will make a comment on a video. So we need to examine all those things using conceptual data modeling. We'll talk about that in more detail soon. Now, unlike relational databases, we actually look at what queries we're going to make on our database at the very beginning. Generally, in a relational database, we shoot for third normal form. We want all the users in one table. We want all the videos in another table. And if we need to kind of tie them together, we're going to use some joins. But unfortunately, joins are expensive, and Cassandra does not support joins natively. You have to step back and say, ah, I'm actually building a model to satisfy queries for my application so that my users are happy. And so one of the first things we consider are the queries. Once we've done all that work, we actually build a schema very similar to a relational schema, but in a Cassandra way. And again, optimize, optimize, optimize. We actually create our tables using CQL. It's Cassandra query language. It looks very much like SQL or SQL. We're going to see this diagram throughout the entire course. We'll keep referencing it. And this is essentially the steps we go through to build our data model. You can see we have the conceptual data model. We also worry about the queries. That's the application workflow. How are people going to navigate the app? 
what does the database need to respond to. We combine both of those to build our logical data model, do our optimizations, and that makes our physical data model, or where the rubber meets the road again, so we can actually build tables and put data into tables. It's nice to do all this kind of high-level stuff, but in the end, we need to build an application. So all this is an algorithm, and as long as you follow that algorithm, you can map any domain into tables for Apache Cassandra. It's tested, it works well, it gives us nice defined results. We like to know that there's an algorithm or pattern of steps we can throw at a domain and out pops a database. However, just like with any application, there's also a little artistic side there. This is where you can get creative and clever. However, your unique solution to this particular problem may not be reproducible in other domains. But it's fun when you see something difficult and you're like, ah, oh, I got this clever idea and boom, you're awesome. That's what we're going to do through this course is help you become awesome. Note the last bullet on the slide. Different data models do have different costs. With Cassandra, we're extremely concerned with how our data is laid out on disk because that determines how fast Cassandra will return a result set. The goal is to build a schema that returns result sets quickly. We don't want to mess with execution plans. We don't want to do any joins. Hey, I just want my data. Give it to me right now. Lightning fast queries. This entire course focuses on building the proper schema to make that happen. If you have data, you can put it in Cassandra. A lot of people come to us and say, hey, I got this domain, I got this domain, I got this. If you have data, you can put it in Cassandra. Now, if your data is not changing a lot, you have a very static website, a small website, I don't think I'd actually spend the time throwing Cassandra at it. But other than that, if you need high availability, scale, you got data, Cassandra is an excellent choice. I remember the first time I heard the term big data, I just thought, oh, that must mean you got gigabytes and gigabytes of data. If you have several users causing inserts and selects to come from your database at once, then you have some high velocity, and Cassandra is awesome in this area. Now, we actually have a hidden goal or a hidden agenda, and that is to make you be awesome. I love being an application developer because every time I do something and other people don't understand it, like, oh, Jamie, you're so magical. And I'm stroking my ego thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm cool. So our goal here is to make you that way as far as Cassandra's concerned. So your coworkers, your boss, your customers can say, oh, mm, that's so cool. You solved that. And you're like, yeah, I just threw up some Cassandra nodes and it solved the problem. But don't tell them that or else they won't think you're so cool. Or if you want to feel like you're standing on one hand like this epic break dancer that could be you as well at least that's maybe how you'll feel that's how i feel after i've been so awesome but when it really comes down to it we gotta sit back and say you know what we're still geeks all right we're nerds I, as many as much cosplay as i put on as many superhero costumes i'll try to pretend i'm in however nerdy or geeky you want to get oh well, we're still just us so you know there's still some realities there but you know what you could Stand on one hand, whatever whatever you want to do. Now, I've done all the talking, and the more I talk, the less you learn. So we've built several exercises for you to get your hands on. So this is a good point to stop, open up the first exercise, and go through it.